And a good spiritual morning to you once again. I'm Father Cosmas. Thanks for joining me today for a quick chat. And of course, our morning cup of coffee. And it's Holy Tuesday. Tuesday of Holy Week. And so we're getting ready, of course, for the Passion, the Crucifixion, and the Resurrection. Just a couple of days. And I thought for today, um, we'd focus on the Passion and the Crucifixion. And then maybe on Thursday, focus on the Resurrection. We're coming up later in the week. And what I wanted to talk to you about uh, in these couple of videos is how we can really try to benefit um, from the services of Holy Week and the experience of Holy Week because it's supposed to have real impact for us, emotional impact. If it has emotional impact, then it resonates with us, then it can be of benefit to us in the spiritual life. If it's something that we just feel we have to attend as a requirement because, well, I'm supposed to do this. I'm Greek Orthodox, I'm Orthodox, so Holy Week comes, you know, I'm supposed to do that. That's how I was raised. This is what I always do. This is when I go to church. Well, why? Because well, you're supposed to. Um, no, you're supposed to actually get something out of it. And what you're getting out of it shouldn't just be an intellectual exercise. Oh, it's fascinating. I just sit down with my little black book and I read through the prayers and I read through the hymns. It's very interesting to me. Um, again, probably not benefiting um, to the greatest extent that we possibly can. We should be emotionally invested, emotionally involved. When we're thinking about the passion and the crucifixion, when I say passion, we're talking about the betrayal of Christ. We're talking about the mocking and the beating and the spitting and the judgment leading up to ultimately him being nailed to a cross and killed. Okay, Christ is our Lord and Savior. We're supposed to feel something about that. We should feel a certain way about that. He's supposed to be for us as Christians, the most important person in our life, right? Honestly, our relationship with Christ is supposed to be the most important relationship we have, even ahead of our husbands and our wives and our children and our parents, everybody. Christ is our creator, our Lord, our savior. We're supposed to feel some sort of way about him. We're supposed to love him. And if I love someone and I hear about him being beaten, and mocked and spat upon and killed, I should feel something about that. It should spark some feeling in me. And uh, that's kind of how we can benefit too from Holy Week. Not just an intellectual exercise, but prayer and living prayer. And not just mental prayer, but prayer of the heart. So that when we go on Thursday night, and we read the Gospels, the 12 Gospels, about the Passion and Crucifixion. When we read the story about his mother following him at a distance and asking him where he's going. When we read the Kondakion on Thursday night, how do you not weep? How do you not cry? How do you not feel something? We should. And that's what I'm saying. When it comes to the Passion and Crucifixion, the first sort of part of the week, the part of the story, um, let yourself feel something, right? Ask yourself, how do I feel about this? How do I feel about Christ, really? And if I love him, should I feel something about the fact that he's being crucified? And you say, well, Father, that happened 2,000 years ago. So I know it happened. It already happened. And um, why should I feel anything about it? Well, because the services, and that's the function of the services, are making the reality present to us today, now. That's why in so many of the services, we start them by saying, Simeron, right? Today, it's making the timeline present. We're supposed to feel in a mystical way that we're transported there. That on Thursday night, when we're reading about the crucifixion, we're there, right? We're in Gethsemane. We're at Golgotha. We're in the shadow of the cross. We're watching him die. That's where we are transported to. That's what the purpose of the service is, mystically to put us there to put us in the frame of mind to believe we're there. It's happening now. It didn't happen 2,000 years ago. It's happening for us today. He dies on the cross for us. He didn't just die 2,000 years ago, and that's it. He's saving us. Now, if it just happened in the past, then, well, it only happened for the people in the past. So it was only the crucifixion was for only the people that were physically present and alive when it happened. And for us 2,000 years later, what's the importance? What's the impact? Well, no, it has impact for us today. How? Well, mystically and, you know, spiritually, he's, you know, dying for our sins and he's conquering death. Yes, in a mystical way, it's happening for me today. 
and I should feel some sort of way about that. Let yourself really experience Holy Week. Feel as if you're present. Feel as if you are there. Sort of transport yourself there. Let yourself go there mentally and emotionally. And then see what happens. See what you feel. See if anything comes up. And if you do feel something, if you feel some sort of emotion, you know, the tears, the sadness, the sorrow, the shock and the horror of seeing the creator of all things, our Lord and Savior, beaten and killed, if that brings tears, that's the real blessing. Because now we've opened our heart up. We've softened our heart as Christians. And now we can grow in the spiritual life. It's not just an academic exercise for us. It's real. It's personal. And that's what Christianity is supposed to be for us in the spiritual life. That's how we learn to love Christ. And that's how we grow in the, in, in the image of Christ. And we do that each and every day. Amen.